Govan Wave of Change uh, helped us to work with different organisations in Govan, bringing those organisations together, the third sector organisations with public sector bodies, and create a dialogue, a dialogue for a possible future, almost like surfing a wave of change rather than creating something new, because there are in Govan many, many, uh, mainly third sector organisations doing incredibly important work. Out of Govan Wave of Change came Govan Together, uh, which created a, um, a broadsheet with, with the map of all the, the resources that are on it. And from there, we've gone into Glorious Govan, which is, a, we've got a Facebook page, which is about celebrating all of what Govan is. Uh, this is the side with all the history. Um, yes, you know, we've got the Riverside Museum across there looking across, but the council wants this Doomster Hill site to be a car park for the Riverside Museum. So what we're trying to do is to rediscover and uncover the resources and the heritage that's here on this site so that we can reverse that and have folks who are visiting the Riverside Museum coming across to experience a heritage trail of all the wonderfulness that's over here on this site. And that will create jobs and employment and, um, and this event tonight is all part of that. Uh, welcome to Orkney Street. <laughs> this is Orkney Street Police Station and Jail. I can't remember when it was actually first built, but it was the first home of Sunny Govan. Uh, we had a nine months, it wasn't a stretch or a sentence, but it was nine months we were here. And it was just a wee idea that we thought Sunny Govan Community Radio. But this is where it started, and I have to say, we're still going almost 15 years later. My job's outreach work is to go out into the community, uh, make people aware of the service that we have here and obviously encourage them to come in. How do we get obviously more people involved first and foremost and then we'll worry about the audience development later uh, because it's more important that as we say 90% community, 10% radio, it's more important to get the community working and talking to each other, that's our first job. A lot of time mainstream media is exclusive. They have to obviously invite you, uh, but as to us like tourism, journalism, or oh, here we are in Govan today, a place full of crime, drug, vandalism, blah blah blah. That's not necessarily the scenario. It's like here's a vibrant community that's been here for thousands of years, has historically could rival any place in the world. Uh, that's not. They don't talk the area up. It's always seemed to us to be talking the area down. Or oh, here's another issue in the schemes, uh, where it's like I don't know, there's lots of people there with. The talent and, and solutions, but nobody's going to canvas an opinion amongst that. Check. Because I'm depressed, stressed every day, puts me to the test, but I'm trying to do my best, mate, straight out of prison, trying to make an honest living, but temptation's holding me back, we offending something sounds quite interesting. It needs me castrate back to my first sentence, a young youth sent to bar for a six month lesson, as I'm sitting on this bus, nervous and sweating, wondering what's waiting for me behind these gates while I make it through my very first date, as I'm pacing through the jail and I wait for Oh, I day. think it's got a human factor here. You feel, if you're down, you can come in, get a cup of tea, you can get a boiler. If you've got any bills or any things you might like to talk to, Jim and Heather help you. So it's not just like a radio place as and just plays records all day. No, it's, it's community, it's got spirit, it's got spirit about it. Well, I got involved in Sunny Govan through the uh, Community Jobs Initiative. Um, I left college in a media and television course. Um, wanted to get to work in the media, so I knew that uh, Sunny Govan were looking uh, for broadcast assistance through the Community Job Initiative. I applied here and uh, I started working here last week. It's given people 
who normally wouldn't be doing this sort of thing, um, you know, a chance to learn new skills, and that's that's certainly a, a really good community spirit and so on in here, and that's really, I think, what we're all about. If we managed to roll out these sort of community initiatives over a much larger scale, you would see um, a much more sort of community spirit in Scotland. Keep it locked, Sonic Up Radio. Coming in. Let's go, let's begin. Yeah, I'm JPS. That's Kevin Boy. We're getting a Friday night. Sonic Up Radio, 103.5 FM. Play all the bouncy beats right across Glasgow, even the skirts of Glasgow. Play all sorts of beats for like dance, scouse, UK hardcore, Gabba, Hardstyle, Makina, old school, happy hardcore, right like Spanish Dawn, or the bouncy beats right around the We've been doing it for uh, roughly, I've been doing it for roughly about eight, nine years or something I've been doing it for. Kev's just joined us in the past year. Shaking around the crossy boys as well, how are we all doing? Silly Gun Radio Friday night. I sell JPS and Kevin Boy. It's good for the community. Taking your heart. It's good to be part of, you know what I mean? And I like, see a lot of the gangs. Look, like, you get Govan, you get Crossy, Whiny. Uh, Kev stays in Govan, you know what I mean? I stay in Crossy. They used to uh, fight with each other, do you know what I mean? We've kind of a, through the music scene, kind of a, like, stopped to fighting a bit anyway, you know what I mean? We try to put out a positive vibe. Like, check, 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 get your music and that, you know what I mean? There's no point in going out. No, I'm totally with it. I mean, I'm running gigs in Govan as well, so it's more or less bringing all the schemes together. And they're coming, they're party with each other as well, so it's all good for the community as well. People working together. The radio couldn't happen without people working together. And if they do work together, things will be produced that then become part of the radio. But the radio's not the be all and end all, uh, although it is, if you know what I mean. <laughs> started in uh, an environmental campaign um, in uh, the Pollock area of Glasgow um, and although we lost the campaign we, we found that we learned an awful lot through the process um, things like how to make community in a different place, how to take responsibility um, for what we believed in, how to articulate our concerns. So we created Gal Gale as the vehicle to do that. Um, and rather than sort of having in mind that we were setting up a charity with all the kind of negative associations that, that comes along with that sort of vaguely patronising associations, we decided we, we wanted to do something more like reconvening a sense of peoplehood. Journey On um, offers, offers our participants uh, progression routes through the, the various activities um, that we have uh, ongoing in the building at any one time. We see our work as providing people with um, the right kind of environment, so a workplace that offers, that challenges people, um, that offers people the respect that, that actually people have all they need uh, to, to sort of get on in life, um, and they just need to be given the right space and the right opportunity, a bit, a bit of respect, some tools, um, and, and kind of left to get on with it themselves. So. Um, we try to create the kind of workplace that, that offers those that offers that kind of environment. I think I think what Gal Gale has to teach Scotland about how it could do things differently, uh, we've learned from our participants. I think what our participants have taught us over the last ten years is that they uh, love to work. Um, if given the right context, given the context where um, they, they feel that they're respected and where they feel that the, the work has purpose and meaning. Um, people love to graft. Um, there's always graft going on in here, and it's something we celebrate. So, so people that have been come to us and maybe been sort of labelled as unemployable or, or work shy, actually, uh, in in the right context, love to work. Um, and I think it's something about experiencing your your contribution to society or your potential contribution to society, and, and experiencing the value of that. Um, and I think that. Beyond the, the income deprivation that people experience through um, long periods of unemployment, uh, people are deprived that sense of their, their contribution and their role in society. And I think that we have to ask ourselves, how are, how are people going to experience that sense of contribution and the sense of identity, belonging and worth that comes with that? I got 
started out with Gal Gale about a year ago. Um, I was I lost my job as a pipe mechanic and was looking for somewhere to, somewhere to sort of fill the time in. So I went along to Gal Gale back then um, and started volunteering with him. I'm part of a new group of people which are seeing a different getting a different benefit from Gal Gale in the past. They've obviously done a, a lot of woodworking courses, but I'm kind of getting a different side of Gal Gale in that Gal Gale allows me to operate professionally uh, very, very cheaply. Um, I, couldn't, I couldn't set up as a wooden boat builder like I have done um, without Gal Gale because it would cost me hundreds of thousands of pounds of equipment costs, um, you know, rent for a space, uh, all the wood machinery equipment. Um, but at Gal Gale, I get that for very, very little. Um, and just through their willingness to encourage woodwork and wooden boat building specifically, you know, I've really seen benefit from that. Thank you.